Welcome back to the PCC podcast. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about why you feel like a zombie after work and what you need to do in order to fix it. <laughs> so like I said, if you're struggling with at the end of a long work day, you feel like a zombie, you feel like your eyes are glazed over, you feel like your brain is just literally French fried. Like I know this feeling through and through because I have put myself through this far too much. And like I said, I'm doing this um, because I am doing this now because I needed to learn this lesson myself. But the reason why that really is, is because if you really think about it, I actually saw a really great reel from a friend, an Instagram reel from a friend who was also a fitness coach in the industry. And she put out the reminder that we are human beings, which means we are animals. We're mammals. We have innate desires and drives and things programmed into us as human beings from evolution. And one of those things is that our body needs to move and that we are animals and that we need to move and play and be in the sun. And the reason why we feel like a zombie is because we wake up and we walk over to our office and then we sit there for 10 hours and then we go to the TV and then we sit there for two hours and then we go to bed and we do it all over again. And the analogy she used was kind of really heavy, but I really liked it. She said, you know, you put an animal in a cage for 12 hours a day in a small dark place for 12 hours a day, you call that animal abuse, right? You call that unfair treatment of a pet, but you do it to yourself and that's just life. (laughs) And so um, I thought that that was really, really interesting because it's kind of true. We do just lock ourselves indoors. What is that doing to us? That is literally affecting our energy. Our It's affecting our productivity. It's our, affecting our ability to live a vibrant, exciting, fun life. So what's the solution to that? And so today's topic is about our steps and our step count and how many should we get every single day. But the key here is, you know, I love if you have a walking pad. I have one too. I use it all the time. I love that, you know, we want to get steps in more creative ways and we want to get them around the house. We're going to talk about all of that, but I want to kind of couple this in here. Steps outside. Let's go get sunshine. Let's be outdoors. There is um, research to show that the stimulus that we get from walking outside because the environment kind of moves around us and it actually changes does more for our brain than walking in place on a treadmill for our mental health. And so the reason that steps are so important, yes, for our physical health, yes, for our fat loss, but also for our mental health and well-being to get outside and remind ourselves that there's a world out there that we can live in and play in and not just be cooped up in a room all day long, which is something I'm totally culprit of. So that's why I wanted to talk about it today. So A couple of ways that not getting enough steps can really impact you on a day-to-day basis would be number one, like I said, having that zombie-like energy at the end of the day or lack thereof, feeling like a drained battery, feeling like your brain is absolutely fried, feeling like your eyes are glazed over, but also other consequences of this are having lots of aches and pains in your body throughout the day, especially hips and knees and ankles, and also uh, constipation, not being able to digest through food well, not feeling like you have really any good digestion or reactions to eating food at all because we need to move our bodies to have that kind of motility. So the solution is that we are, well, the problem is that we're not moving enough and we need to implement more movement into our day. We can do that indoors, but we also want to do that outdoors. And the benefits that getting sun on our skin have for us outweigh so much. Like I promise you, you are going to feel like a different person if you just start your day by going outside in the sun. So how much do we need to move, right? How many steps do we need to take per day to be a healthy human, to reach our fat loss goals? I know that's the answer that you all want. So how many steps? So basically there's been a lot of research to kind of figure that out. And Contrary to popular belief, it's not just, you know, hit 10,000 steps a day because that's what the Apple Watch tells you to do as the goal. It's a little bit more nuanced than that. So 
the technical threshold to take someone from, say, categorized as a sedentary lifestyle to a slightly more active lifestyle or a moderately active lifestyle is about 5,000 steps per day. So general rule of thumb with steps is that about 2,000 steps usually constitutes a mile. Now that's not taking into account your stride length and how many steps you need to take in order to do that or whether or not you're running or walking, right? However, um, it's just an estimate about 2000 steps is typically a mile. Um, and so 5,000 steps would be two and a half miles per day. You might be looking at that and being like, holy crap, that sounds horrible. But, um, just take into account the fact that if you wear a step counter, like an Apple watch, getting up to go to the bathroom, getting up to go make a meal, getting up to go do things throughout the day does count and you can rack up probably about a thousand, 2000 from just an average sedentary lifestyle at home, which leaves you only two or 3000 steps to go. All you really need to do is have a 20, 30 minute walk in there or a couple 10 minute walks broken up throughout the day to get to that goal of 5,000 and not be completely sedentary. So if you don't move at all, my first goal for you is just get to five just get to 5,000 steps or wherever your steps are, let's say they're at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, just add you know, 25% to that for a week, then add 25% to that and just go little by little by little. It's just about adding in, right? Like a 10 minute walk here, a five minute walk to the mailbox there. Those things matter. So go with baby steps, but that is one way that you can go about it. And then you know, when you get past the 5,000 step mark, then the question is like, okay, like, should we then hit 10,000 and 10,000 is a lot, especially if you have a work from home lifestyle and you're not just like on a walking pad all day, it is hard to do. 10,000 steps has always been a little bit of a stretch for me personally. Um, and it's something that I really have to actively work towards and I do have to use my walking pad for, but I definitely recommend, you know, if you are at that 5,000 and you want to get into the active category, the active lifestyle category, the threshold for that is about our 7,500, 8,000 step range per day is considered more active. And there are a lot of health benefits, body composition benefits, physiological benefits to hitting that 7,500 step threshold per day. The reason that I make this distinction is because it's honestly just kind of encouraging for people to hear like, wow, I don't need to hit a whole freaking 10,000 steps per day in order to be healthy, to be active, because that can oftentimes be discouraging for people who do lead very sedentary jobs that are not accustomed to that at all. Like for myself, if I heard that, I would probably be like, well, there's no hope for me, right? Because I just, it's a really big struggle for me to hit 10,000 steps a day. There was a point in 2021 when I challenged myself to hit 10,000 steps per day every single day for 12 weeks straight and I did it but it ended with me having to be on a walking pad for like an hour every night at like 10 p.m because that was just like how much of a struggle it was so uh, with that being said 7,500 to 8,000 steps is about that range where we're getting into an active lifestyle so I encourage you if you have an active fat loss goal if you want to be um getting all of the health benefits that you can, I would just aim for that 7,500 to start and then add from there. Obviously, um, it's going to vary from day to day. So something else that's very helpful is looking at your average steps for the week versus just a day by day. Did I fail or did I pass? Right. And so something that sometimes our coaches do is look at a total step count for the week too. So rather than just 7,500 per day, we might multiply that by seven and that's our total step count for the week. And we try to aim for that. Now that could result in some issues if you totally just, you know, botch it one day and you have to make up like 20,000 steps on another day. I wouldn't recommend it if you're prone to doing stuff like that. But if you're fairly consistent overall and you need a little bit of that give and take, that could be super helpful too. But I like to look at either that or like the average step count for the week because there will be ebbs and flows and things you can't control. And that's how you can really make sure you're on track overall. Now, how do we get more steps? How do we actually do that? So I already gave a couple of tips with just getting on some short walks throughout the day. Um, You don't need to go on an hour long walk or run in order to get these steps. But um, one thing that I really like to do is I do keep my walking shoes, running shoes right next to my desk 
by my walking pad and I make sure that I use my walking pad pretty much whenever I'm on meetings that I don't need to be super active and taking notes on. Reason why is because walking actually kind of helps me think on my feet a little bit more, no pun intended. Um, but you know, when I'm sitting and I'm doing deep work and processing stuff in the mornings, I, I'm not going to want to walk, but later on in the day, um, just to kind of keep me on my feet, keep me active, keep me sharp, I will do that through most of my afternoon meetings. And that's just how my day is scheduled in particular. Um, but I also will try to get on a walk out in the middle of the day around lunchtime. And I usually try to just force myself to walk after each meal. I call it a digestion walk and it helps me get a couple steps in, kind of process my food a little bit better, get things moving, get the gut motility going. And it does help me with my digestion and my overall satisfaction with food. Um, so that is something that I strongly recommend if you're not doing that five, 10 minute walk to do that can really, really help overall and help rack up some steps throughout the day. Now, a couple things you can do to improve getting more steps throughout the day that aren't just walks can be things like making life inconvenient. This is a tip that we use with our clients a lot. Uh, whenever it's say a rainy day or that's just not like the phase of life that they're in where they can go out and walk, you know, out on the street because it's not a safe area making things inconvenient. So think about this. When you take your laundry from say the laundry area to your closet, you usually probably pick it all up as much as you can at once and walk it all over in one trip, right? The groceries, when you bring them in from the car, you usually pick it all up with as many, you know, as many bags as you possibly can all in one trip, right? One trip or no trip. But what if you intentionally took it one bag at a time, one clothing item at a time? What if that is how you chose to do it because you're gonna to have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And we've had clients who have done this and they say, yes, my family does laugh at me, but it's all in good fun and they're able to get a ton of steps doing that. Another thing that I like to suggest is just having a dance party in your living room um, and <laughs> just turning the music up really loud and jumping around, dancing. Um, I love doing that because it'll actually get your heart rate up a ton. It'll get you sweating, but it's super fun and it's a fun way to pass the time and just basically do some cardio. Um, and then lastly, I will say just like going out of your way to do things a little inconveniently elsewhere. So for example, I have a bathroom right next to my office but I try not to use it whenever I can remember, whenever I'm not like in a true pinch for time, I will get up and I will walk all the way across the house to the bathroom um, in my master bedroom. And I will use that one and then walk all the way back to the office because that just gives me a couple more steps. Um, you know, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, walking from the back of the parking lot into the store, all those things really do make a difference. Um, in the winter time, oftentimes my husband and I will opt to go get groceries more and walk around the store intentionally a little bit more um, because it's cold outside and we don't want to spend too much time outside, um, but we'll kind of get more steps around the grocery store or go shopping in indoor malls, get steps that way on the weekends. So we'll do that sort of thing to rack up steps um, in the colder months too. But there's a lot of ways you can do it. I definitely say and suggest getting a walking pad. It's a worthwhile investment for your office and your home office. But um, otherwise, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you again for listening to this episode of the PCC podcast. I hope that you found it valuable and useful. And I really, really appreciate your time and attention because I know that's the most valuable resource that there is. So if you haven't already, leave a rating and review for the podcast. It really does help us reach more women and more people and make a bigger impact. And make sure you're subscribed if you like this episode and you want more stuff like this coming into your inbox. So let me know if you have any suggestions for future episodes, but thank you so much for listening and I'll hope to see you back next week.